Pictures That Talk Dr. Lee DeForest has at last succeeded in synchronizing the action with sound. Photoplay, July 1924 And now the motion pictures really talk. It has been almost 20 years since Thomas A. Edison first tried to accomplish this, but it has remained for Dr. Lee DeForest to bring the talkies to their present state of advancement. Mr. Edison's first attempt was made by the simple process of playing stock cylinder records on a phonograph and having the actors sing or pretend to sing with the record while the camera photographed the lip movement. By this method, synchronization was impossible. Sometimes the singer would be so far ahead or behind the record that the result was laughable. Edison knew this would never do, so he finally invented the kinetoscope. Again, he used the phonograph, but he obtained better results by making the phonograph record at the same time as the motion picture negative. This gave perfect synchronization in the talking of the pictures, but two operators were needed for the projection, one for the film in the booth and the other backstage to run the phonograph. Sometimes the results were good, more often they were not. But nevertheless, these pictures had quite a vogue and drew great audiences all over the country. Edison was not satisfied, but he was never able to get perfect synchronization nor was any of a dozen others who tried. About this time, Lee DeForest, then a young electrical engineer in the West, was experimenting with wireless, or radio as it is now called. Out of this came the Audion, which is now part of every radio set and which makes broadcasting and receiving possible. Three years ago, DeForest became interested in motion pictures and began his experiments to make them talk. He realized that synchronization and audibility were essential. After three years, he has worked out his phonofilm. He has synchronized the picture and the voice by photographing the sound on the same strip of film with the action and at the same time. Instead of the voice being phonographed, it is radioed from the speaker's lips by sound waves to the camera. There, these sound waves are converted into light waves and photographed on the left side of the film. All of this is accomplished with any standard motion picture camera, to which has been added an attachment for photographing sound. The negative thus produced is developed in the usual manner and prints made exactly similar to the prints of any other motion picture. In projecting the DeForest phonofilms, an inexpensive attachment is necessary, which fits on any standard projection machine. In this attachment is a tiny incandescent lamp. As the film passes this light, the lines made by the voice become flickers or light waves. These light waves are picked up by infinitesimal wires and converted into sound waves again. Other larger wires take the sound waves into the amplifier, from which they are carried from the projection room by ordinary wires backstage, amplified again, and thrown on the screen in precise synchronization with the action of the scene. But what if the print should break? That is one of the first questions asked by exhibitors, and the answer is always ready for them. If the print breaks, it is patched together just like any other motion picture print. The pictures are taken at the rate of 20 to 22 per second so that two or even three frames may be cut out of a film without being noticed in the synchronization. My talking pictures have not yet been perfected, says Dr. DeForest. I never said they were, but I will make this prediction. Within a year from now, we will have perfected talking pictures to a point where the voices will be recorded with such clarity that it will be impossible to distinguish between the actual human voice as spoken by a person present and the voice of the same person recorded on the film. We have found out what causes the metallic sound that makes the voice unnatural. It is so simple that I am amazed we did not discover the cause at the start. That will be remedied immediately. It is perfectly possible now to record different voices so that they are instantly recognizable to one familiar with them, just as it is possible for you to recognize the voice of a friend over the telephone. Dr. DeForest's first experiments with recording sounds on film with the phonofilm were in connection with the reproduction of music. Everyone knows how absurd it is to see a motion picture of a man playing, for example, a saxophone. His cheeks puff out, and he gets red in the face with the exertion, and never a sound is heard. DeForest made his saxophone player heard. Then he experimented on dance numbers. The motion picture producer always steers clear of dancing on the screen as much as possible, because it is impossible, even in the best theaters, for the orchestra to play so that the dancers will be in step so Dr. DeForest photographed the music and the dancer on the same film. Through the interest of Dr. Riesenfeld, permission was given Dr. DeForest to experiment with the covered wagon film. Dr. Riesenfeld arranged the musical score for this production, and Dr. Forrest is photographing this music on the negative of the picture. 
This means if the work is successful, that the covered wagon may be seen in any theater, no matter how small, with the same musical program that was played with it for more than a year in New York. 